Hey, what's up guys, Tino here, and today I'm interviewing Dr. Milton Mills to talk about protein and whether you can get enough on a plant-based diet. So let's jump right into the interview and get into it. Uh, kind of one of the oldest uh, attacks on plant-based eating is that, oh my God, you're gonna end up protein deficient. Nothing could be further from the truth if you're eating a well-planned diet. First of all, all plant cells have protein, in them, but some are more concentrated than others. So typically your concentrated sources of plant protein are your Grains, corn, wheat, rice, quinoa, which actually quinoa is a legume, but it's treated as a grain. And then you have your legumes, beans, peas, lentils, and then nuts, cashews, walnuts, almonds, pistachios, pecans. All nuts are very good sources of concentrated protein. The one issue with the nuts is that they tend to have higher fat content, so you have to be judicious in your intake. And then you get to your more dilute sources of protein, and those are your vegetables. Green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale cauliflower, carrots, you name it. And then also root vegetables also have protein in them, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes, turnips, and so forth. But again, those also tend to be more dilute because they have a higher water content. So if, if somebody is eating a varied plant-based diet that includes legumes, grains, vegetables, fruits, as long as they're getting adequate calories, it is almost impossible to become protein deficient. That's just a, a myth. I'll say that with one caveat. There has been a few occasions where I've talked to someone who said, oh, you know, I tried to go plant-based or I tried to become a vegetarian, but I found that I had no energy and that I was, you know, weak and I and, uh, started losing a lot of weight. And so I asked him, well, what were you eating? And they'll say, well, I was eating a lot of broccoli and stir fry and your salads. Well, the problem with that is that those are vegetables that have very high water content, a lot of fiber, but are not your concentrated calories calorie and protein sources. I mean, essentially kind of the food that a rabbit can subsist on, but a human being, because we're such large animals, we need a lot more calories. We need more concentrated protein sources. The one issue is that people need to make sure they're eating from all of the various categories of uh, plant foods, and then protein intake is not a problem. And I can't stress this enough that the largest, strongest land animals on this planet are all strict plant eaters. Elephants, rhinos, giraffes, hippos, cows, moose, deer, so on. And I also point out to people that Western civilization was built on the back of herbivores. You know, when we needed to pull plows or lift, you know, the like the stones that they used to make the cathedrals in Europe via pulleys, we didn't hitch those those machines up, uh, uh, the plows and the pulleys and, and so forth up to lions, tigers, and bears. We hitched them to horses and oxen because it's only the plant eaters that have the strength and the stamina to do the kind of work it took to build Western civilization. So there is more than enough protein in plant foods. As I often point out to people, all protein is initially made by plants. Any protein you find in animal tissues is actually recycled plant protein. So you don't need to have animal protein. And not only don't you need it, but you shouldn't have it because animal protein is toxic to our systems in a lot of ways. It damages the kidneys and can accelerate loss of kidney function, damages our blood vessels and can promote the development of atherosclerosis and heart disease. And it's also been linked to a number of different cancers. So animal protein is not only is it not necessary, it is healthier to avoid it. I actually have a detailed lecture called are humans designed to eat meat, which is a comparative anatomy study looking at mammalian carnivores, mammalian herbivores, and then humans to show that we have the jaw structure, the dental complement, the digestive tract, and the physiology of a committed herbivore. As I said before, animal protein actually causes a lot of problems in our physiology if it's ingested over a long period of time, which is why diets that are high in animal foods are associated with higher levels of chronic disease and also earlier death. Around the world, studies show that the more plant-based the diet, the greater the longevity and the lower the risk for one, all-cause mortality, and two, chronic disease. I, absolutely, it is it is not necessary. And to just throw in one more little caveat, it turns out 90% of the people that choke to death every year choke to death on meat. And that's because, again, we don't have pharynx and esophagus and swallowing mechanism that's designed to handle animal tissue. If you actually look at the way carnivores eat, they don't don't chew. They simply slice off a hunk of meat, bone, hooves, hide, and they swallow it. And they have 
such intense corrosive digestive acids that they can dissolve this stuff with no problem. All herbivores, on the other hand, have to chew their food. And the reason is that herbivores, such as humans, we have enzymes in our saliva that as we chew the food, it starts the process of digestion as we're chewing. And humans, we have an enzyme called salivary amylase, which is designed to break down uh, plant starch. And as we're chewing, that process uh, starts and it's completed as the uh, food travels through our digestive tract. So the fact that we chew is the sine qua non of being a plant eater. So I hope you guys found this video valuable. Let me know what your thoughts are on protein and whether you can get enough on a plant-based diet. Drop a comment down below for me. Give this video a like, share it around, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.